Gurumahagut Kahirlig and uh, I'd like to welcome the Minister to the House and uh, to say how delighted I am to second uh, this bill proposed by my colleague Senator Lorraine Higgins and just to commend Senator Higgins for the work she's done in bringing this bill forward, for the very eloquent speech which she has made uh, in support of the bill in proposing it and also for her bravery in bringing forward this, uh, this issue and in speaking publicly about her own experience. I think that needs to be acknowledged too because I think uh, it can be very difficult for uh, politicians, for those public representatives to speak publicly about online abuse and yet it's something with which we're all very familiar. I should say it's not an issue of course that's confined to cy cyberspace or to online abuse and I recall as a student union officer in the late 1980s being subjected to particularly vicious hate mail uh, for a stance we took at the time in favour of freedom of information and free speech concerning the right of women to have information about uh, crisis pregnancy services including abortion so you know there was vicious hate mail it was of the snail mail variety it was nonetheless extremely hurtful and very difficult to deal with as a for a young person and uh, but I think what's, what we have seen in more recent years has been a much more pernicious type of abuse that has taken place online uh, of, of abusive um, uh, attacks on, on young people particularly online and really I suppose the, the difference is that it's very difficult to escape it when it's online when it's coming in on your phone on your computer uh, on your screen in your home space it's invading the home space in particular of teenagers and certainly talking to friends of mine who are parents of teenagers they're particularly aware of the really of the really nasty effects that this can have on their children's self-esteem Senator Higgins has spoken about the most uh, appalling examples of the effect of this sort of uh, online uh, bullying uh, through and, and the awful teenage suicides that we've seen. And clearly this sort of bullying is not confined to uh, young people. It's not something that only young people are guilty of. Because we see in particular on Twitter and on other social media where people can, uh, can uh, express themselves anonymously, we see really vicious attacks uh, traded uh, um, and bullying traded between adults also. Clearly it is a difficult area to legislate on because of course there are freedom of expression, free speech concerns. Uh, and, that's, uh, and that goes without saying. And again, Senator Higgins has spoken eloquently about that. Uh, and she's also pointed out that her bill is a starting point, as indeed private members' bills will tend to be. These are starting points, they're not perfect, and it is uh, incumbent on all of us to look at how to improve upon it. Undoubtedly, there are other issues which the bill doesn't deal with and which would need to be dealt with in a more comprehensive bill on this issue. Issues, again, which Senator Higgins has touched upon, like the duty of the ISPs, the internet service providers, the duty of, the, uh, of those to, uh, to be more proactive in terms of takedowns and speaking to other practicing colleagues uh, in, at the bar who've dealt with this, this issue uh, it's extremely difficult to obtain a remedy for a client who has who has been faced with even the most appalling uh, false uh, um, uh, uh, allegations online it's extremely difficult to get a civil remedy there's the extraterritorial issue the fact that most of the ISPs are located outside of this jurisdiction and therefore legislation might have to address that issue too so clearly there are other issues that will need to be addressed with addressed uh, the ancillary orders that the that are provided for in section uh, in section five of the bill of course have a precedent in terms of the uh, harassment provisions in the non-fatal offences against the person act uh, so there are issues that would need to be dealt with beyond the criminal and that this bill seeks to address but clearly these would have to be looked at again there's also an issue about dealing with cyber crime more generally because clearly a lot of our legislation uh, is has not been uh, drafted with cyber crime in mind and so we see not just in the area of bullying and online bullying which this uh, bill addresses but also in other areas we see a need to uh, improve improve upon our legislation. But this area of cyberbullying in particular has been the subject of a good deal of work to date and this bill forms an important part I think of, the, of a series of different uh, reports and measures that have been suggested to deal with this. Uh, so the bill deals clearly with uh, the sharing of harmful uh, and malicious electronic communications. Uh, Senator Higgins has kept the uh, offences in the summary jurisdiction of the court which I think is important uh, but it follows from and builds upon some of the recommendations that have been made by previous groups and in 2013 the Minister for Communications, of course, established the Internet Contents Governance Advisory Group, which published a report in 2014. And I know those recommendations are currently being discussed between the relevant departments. Uh, the Law Reform Commission, importantly, is also engaged in work on this area, looking at cybercrime affecting personal safety, privacy and reputation. And looking at the issues paper that the Commission published in November, I think uh, some of the questions that they ask interested parties to address really are dealt with and addressed in this bill. Um, they point out that the offence of harassment currently contained in Section 10 of the Non-Fatal Offences Against the Person Act uh, may not apply to certain forms, of, particularly of indirect cyber harassment, uh, and it may not refer indeed to cyber, 
cyber harassment directly because it doesn't refer specifically to that type of harassment. It clearly was drafted uh, pr uh, prior, to, um, prior to the prevalence of online, uh, of online communication in the same way. Um, the, bill, the, the Section 10 Act doesn't address, for example, the setting up of fake profiles where harmful behaviour is directed towards a person other than the victim but concerns and harms the victim. And the Law Reform Commission are examining whether Section 10 should be amended, therefore, uh, whether, and again, they're looking at the issue of extraterritorial jurisdiction. They're also looking at the difficulty with the, with the requirement of persistent behaviour in the current of offence of harassment, so that posting content online with a single upload, even where it is seriously harmful uh, in, in, to a person's safety or privacy, the sort of, uh, uh, sort of communication that is referred to in Section 3, uh, 2A of this bill, inciting or encouraging people to commit suicide, for example, that's sort of absolutely appalling uh, abuse online. But this may not amount to harassment under Section 10, even if Section 10 can be used in the cyber setting, and about, uh, there is a question about that. So the Law Reform Commission are investigating the possibility of either amending Section 10 of the, no the Non-Fatal Offences Against the Person Act, or of creating a new offence, as this bill aims to do, and clearly that's a question that needs to be addressed. But clearly the Law Reform Commission has identified the flaws and the, uh, and the gaps that currently exist in our legislation in dealing with the sort of cyberbullying that we've seen. Uh, the, uh, I suppose another point to make is that uh, hate crime more generally also requires updating our legislation on hate crime. And there's a recent University of Limerick report on this issue. The Prohibition of Incitement to Hatred Act 1989 is our existing law, but again, there are issues where it needs to be updated and the EU Commission has, has uh, called for that. And the Law Reform Commission are also investigating this. Uh, the Law Reform Commission is specifically looking at the issue I've already raised about existing civil law remedies and whether these are adequate to protect against cyber harassment and to safeguard privacy rights and again this is the issue really of the takedown order and whether ISPs can be um can be uh, ordered to remove, uh, dam to remove uh, particularly defamatory content or abusive content. So these are some of the complex questions that will need to be addressed. And, uh, and Minister, I, you know, I, I think this bill, as, as Senator Higgins has said, is a starting point in seeking to address some of these issues. But really the core of it is seeking to address this really harmful conduct that we've seen has caused harm uh, to individuals. But it seeks to address it in a sensitive manner that does balance rights of freedom of expression, rights to free speech, or also, and I think that would have to be taken into account in, uh, any, in any final draft. But I hope the government can accept this bill at second stage and that we can see uh, a consensus emerging on how we move forward in this issue. Clearly legislation of some sort is required to deal with new forms of bullying and, uh, clearly, uh, and clearly existing legislation may not be adequate. But I would agree with Senator Higgins that this is not just a matter for criminal justice, that there is also a huge need for a greater education and awareness raising around the safe and, uh, and respectful use of online media and of social media and, uh, and the need to ensure that anonymity does not give people some sort of carte blanche to be abusive.